Hi everybody! So today I'm going to be walking you through the Chem Sherpa tool. As you probably know, Chem Sherpa is uh, a substance management tool that is very popular in Japan. Um, and it can be a really useful skill to have under your belt because a lot of Japanese companies require Chem Sherpa reports before importing products from around the world. And it can seem a bit complicated at first, but once you actually learn how it works, it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, the first thing that you should know is that there are actually two ChemSherpa tools. There's the article tool, which you can see here, which is blue. And there's also the chemical substance tool, um, which I think is like orange. And yeah, we don't really need to concern ourselves with that. That is really, the chemical tool is really pertaining to um, like individual chemicals or like raw substances. Maybe if there's like a substance that um, you want to do a report on that isn't part of the chemistry database, you would use that. But if you only need to make chemistry reports for like components or for products, then you don't really have to worry about the substance tool. So that's just a quick thing to keep in mind. When you go to the ChemSherpa website, there will be a download link for the article tool and the substance tool. So make sure that you're downloading the right one or else, you know, you might get confused. Um, and yeah, so when you open the ChemSherpa tool, it should look like this. This is not checked off. Um, so it should look like this. Um, and yeah, we'll probably get back to like most of these sections later, but um, the first thing you should always do is click this area box if you want to uh, declare substances, like if you want to declare like restricted substances. So if you want to import compliance information, essentially, I can actually show you if this isn't clicked and you try, it says that it won't let you because the subject area isn't determined. Um, so yeah, if you just want to do compliance, or if you just want to do composition, sorry, then like that's fine. But if you want to do uh, compliance, then yeah, you need to click this. Um, so yeah, let's start with the composition section. Okay, so I already had a bit of an example <laughs> that I started. Um, so you know what, actually we're going to delete this for now. Oh so, yeah, so here you can see it says level, component, material another other section so as you can see here like the component is mandatory the level isn't mandatory so you don't actually have to fill out the level part um the level would be useful if for example you want to group components together like let's say you have like this huge product and in the product there's a pcb and in the pcb there is a capacitor a resistor etc etc um in that case it could be useful if you want to just like show that like these components that's not how you spell it resistor that these components are part of this like larger level uh, but yeah it's not necessary though if you just want to put each individual component that's also fine um and yeah for simplicity's sake we're gonna we're just gonna do like one small component so i can show you how it works uh, so let's say in this example we have a screw, um, and let's say we have one screw. Uh, so here is where we would put the usage of the part. In our case, let's say that this screw is an iron alloy with a nickel finish. So the first thing we would do is we would select the usage and name of the material. This isn't, like, this doesn't need to be 100% accurate, but it's basically just like the category that your, that the component falls into. Um, and if there isn't, like, if like none of these categories apply to what your component is, it's not the end of the world, just like choose the most similar one. But in this case, we have the base material and let's say it is highly alloyed steel select i actually don't know the difference between highly alloyed and low alloyed steel but 
let's say Hallie. <laughs> let's say it's highly yellowed still. And then if we want to put the finish, we would add a separate layer in a sense. This we can delete. We actually don't need this because we only have one component. So yeah, in this case, because there are two layers or even like we can call them homogeneous material levels, which is uh, a term that's used often in robots. Um, yeah, so we would add a second, uh, a second row, I guess, to denote um, another homogeneous material level. Uh, and then in this case, we would put plating, and we would say, I said nickel plating, I believe, so we'll put nickel plating. Did I say nickel or zinc? I'm going to say nickel. Nickel plating. Um, and yeah, so that's basically what you, you would do is just like look at the component, look at like each layer, and then have one column per layer. And then same as with the component, if ever you wanted to delete, you would just click it and then hopefully the whole row. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that anything that's grayed out like this means that you cannot edit it yourself, you can't type it yourself. Um, so you would need, like, to select it, uh, like if you see here, if I try clicking on it, it, it won't do anything. So yeah, so then here you would put the mass of each layer. Uh, let's say the base is, I don't know, let's say this, this screw is 5 grams. The plating, let's say the plating is like 0. 0, 0.5 grams um, and yeah so this is required this is not so material code of public standard I don't really think you have to worry about that remarks also I mean if you want to put remarks you can but not really necessary and then here we have substance so this is where you would put the actual chemical composition of the part or of the the homogeneous material level. It says that it's not required, but in my opinion, you should always put the substance because like that's why you're doing it. I mean, hey, if, if for whatever reason you don't you don't need to declare the chemical substance, then like, you know, don't. Um, but yeah, like for me I feel like the whole reason of using a tool like Chemtripa is to to declare the substances that are present in your part. So um, I actually don't really know why this isn't required, but yeah, this is something that you should always be filling out. And obviously, if you're going to be doing compliance, like you can't you can't do a compliance section if you don't declare your substances. So um, this section is really important. Um, so yeah, so let's say here, um, going back to the highly alloyed steel. Um, let's say that the steel is an alloy that is 95% iron and 5% lead. Once again, I don't know if that actually counts as highly alloyed or low alloyed, but, um, yeah, like, let's say that's the chemical composition of, uh, this steel alloy. So you would click add to add a second one. And it's important to pay attention to where the rows are. Um, and like, let's say like not accidentally add a row here, even though it's supposed to be here. Um, because yeah, like you're basically saying that like these, like all the substances that are in these two rows belong to this, this alloy. So yeah, so here you would put the substance, uh, there are multiple ways you can do it. One thing that's really neat about Chem Sherpa is that if you put in the cast number, it actually can usually update the name for you, so that can like save you a little bit of time. So uh, what I usually like to do is put in the cast numbers and then click update substance information. And then yeah, so you can see here that sometimes it fills it in, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it can save you a bit of time, but maybe not like a lot. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so this was the cast number for, um, and yeah, if you wanted to, you also could have searched for it here or in here. Um, but I find the search function can be a little bit confusing sometimes if you're searching by name. So yeah, it's really just, you know, however, however you want to do it. Um, yeah, and so here we're going to put the maximum content rate per materials. So that is essentially 
the content rate for each homogeneous material level. So it's not the content rate in the overall product, but it's really that like, just like in its like individual row. So for example, nickel, in this case, the plating is 100% nickel, so it's pure nickel, which means that we would put 100 here. And in this case, let's say that this, this alloy is um, like 95% iron, 5% lead. So we'd put 95 here and 5. So it should always be the percentage of this. So of like whatever the um, base material, plating, etc., like whatever this row is, it should be the percentage of that. Another way you can think about it is like it would be the percentage that corresponds to the mass that's here. Um, so yeah, here you don't actually have to put the mass, but like once again, it's just one of those things because there are so many rows and so many columns, like it can be easy to be a little bit tripped up. So yeah, it's just something to keep in mind, make sure that this percentage corresponds to this mass. And yeah, that's about it. Um, so once you click everything, um, once you think you're done, you can do a, an error check. Um, before we do that though, one thing to keep in mind is that once you put in a substance like lead, what you can see is it'll actually show you if it's applicable to these regulations that are here. So this isn't the the like official compliance section, um, but it's kind of like an intro <laughs> in a way. Um, so yeah, so here for lead, we can see that ELV, it's applicable, Rojas, it's applicable. Um, SVHC, it's applicable. Reach NX17, both lead and nickel are applicable. China Rojas, etc., etc. Um, so, yeah, before you finalize it, you can do an error check.